Dear students, Assalamu alaikum. We are going to start lectures on organic spectroscopy. Today will be our first lecture in which we will study the importance of organic spectroscopy, its introduction and different parameters which are involved in spectroscopic techniques. So first we should know that what is the importance of organic spectroscopy. So organic spectroscopy is used to identify organic compounds. Before these spectroscopic techniques, there were classical methods due to which we can identify our organic compounds by using different laboratory tests or different laboratory methods. There are two types of laboratory methods like qualitative and quantitative tests. In qualitative tests, we study element, different elemental detection like detection of carbon, hydrogen, halogens or sulfur or nitrogen. And uh, in quantitative analysis, the percentage of element or ratio of the element in a compound was measured through which we determine empirical formula and with the help of molecular mass which uh, we determine by using viscosity method or some other method we can you we used and uh, then we finally get our molecular formula but uh, the kind of classical method or conventional method were laborious tedious they were time consuming less efficient and the more amount of substance was required but the second one now we use for the detection of compounds or identification are the modern methods which are spectroscopic techniques these spectroscopic techniques are used to identify organic compounds with these methods are more efficient and sophisticated and the less amount or minimum amount of the substance is required for the for these analysis now first the definition of spectroscopy spectroscopy is the study of interaction of compounds with electromagnetic radiations it is the interaction of compounds with electromagnetic radiations so we should know that what is the electromagnetic radiations electromagnetic radiation consists of electric field and magnetic field and these are the radiations with constant velocity of 3 into 10 power 8 meter per second with wavelength and frequency both these field electric field and magnetic field are perpendicular to each other and they are perpendicular towards the direction of propagation here we have shown an uh, the diagram in which we represented that if here is the electric field the second one magnetic field is on is perpendicular on 90 degree or right angle with the magnetic field and both these field travel perpendicular to each other and the direction of the propagation is on z-axis like one field is on x-axis electric field the magnetic field on y-axis and their propagation is toward the z-axis according to Planck's quantum theory energy of these radiation is directly proportional to the frequency of the radiation or by removing the proportionality constant we get E is equal to h nu where h is the Planck's constant and its value is 6.6 to 6 to 10 power minus 34 joule second or we can manipulate it E is equal to h c by lambda because nu is equal to c by lambda as it is inversely related with the wavelength of the light which is lambda and we also write it as E is equal to h nu bar because 1 by lambda is equal to nu bar nu bar is equal to 1 by lambda which is the wave number so e is equal to h nu bar so we can correlate these different parameters of the radiations like if we have to correlate energy with the frequency then we use this equation and if we we want to find the relation with energy and the wavelength then it will be the equation and if we 
if you want to find out the relationship between energy and wave number then we will use this equation so all these equations are important in different mechanisms electromagnetic radiation consists of a spectrum of electromagnet uh, consist of different uh, regions of light having different wavelengths and uh, we call it spectrum of electromagnetic radiation here we have different type of radiations present in electromagnetic radiation like cosmic rays gamma rays x-rays uv visible ir infrared microwave radio waves and then radar waves so here is the uh, we have shown that how the wavelength increases with the increase of these uh, radiations with different type of radiations as we go from cosmic rays to radio waves their wavelength increases but their energy and frequency decreases so this arrow shows that energy and frequency is greater on this direction like cosmic rays gamma rays and x-rays have greater energy and frequency and then and also we can point it out that here x-rays have 0.1 to 10 nanometer wavelength or up to 50 and uv range is 200 to 400 nanometer between x-rays and uv range there is vacuum uv range which is up from 50 to 200 nanometer visible range is 400 to 800 nanometer ir is 1 micro to 25 micrometer microwaves 25 to 1000 micrometers are up to 1 millimeter and radio waves from 1 millimeter to 1000 millimeter or 1 meter or above and then after uh, these there are radar waves which are more longer in wavelength if we consider the gamma rays gamma rays are important in nuclear reactions and they penetrate into the nucleus and they have effects on the nuclear uh, subatomic particles uh, if we look at x-rays x-rays causes ionization of the inner electrons in an atom uv and visible range they causes excitation of electrons so therefore for uv visible spectroscopy we use uv visible range which causes electronic transition Infrared causes rotational excitation of the molecules and for this IR spectroscopy which is important and we use this technique. Microwaves, for microwaves there is vibrational excitation and for vibrational excitation we use these type of radiations for microwave spectroscopy and radio waves causes spin excitation and uh, we use these type of radiations for NMR spectroscopy, nuclear magnetic resonance. What uh, is the difference between spectroscopy and spectrometry? In spectroscopy, there is no degradation of the molecules which are given above techniques like UV visible, IR, microwave and NMR. These All these are spectroscopic techniques. While spectrometry, like mass spectrometry, which requires almost 70 electron volt uh, radiation, it causes ionization and fragmentation of the compounds or molecules. So, if the compound is degraded, the technique is spectrometry. If we look at the different instrumentation, then spectrometer, spectrometer measures the spectrum of radiation, while spectrophotometer it measures the specific wavelength of radiation, specific interaction of the specific wavelength with the compound by using filters. So in this case, in spectrophotometer, we use specific filters to separate different wavelengths of light or select a different wavelength of light. While colorimetry, colorimetry use measurement of the visible region. Types of interaction with electromagnetic radiations. There are different type of interactions of the sample with electromagnetic radiation. Here, let's suppose we have a sample and the incident light when enters into the sample, it is some portion of it is absorbed while the other will be transmitted. So here is the transmitted light. Sometime or some portion of the light may be reflected or sometime it causes emission and scattering. So these are the different 
interacting parameters are these are the different type of interactions above which uh, the three important type of interactions which are usually uh, we used to measure or to identify the sample is absorption emission or scattering so by these by using these three interaction parameters we can identify our sample that is absorption emission or scattering <coughs> so <coughs> absorption spectrum emission spectrum or scattering spectrum uh, are uh, further can be divided into continuous or discontinuous spectrum like if the absorption or emission spectrum is continuous like light spectrum or it may be discontinuous for example line spectrum or band spectrum in line spectrum the example is atomic spectrum while in band, band spectrum it is the molecular spectrum so band spectrum is the band of the uh, different wavelengths of light which are which obtained on the uh, or uh, which obtained on our recorder Why, whereas in line spectrum only the specific wavelength of light will be observed with a specific boundary molecular energy levels if we look at the total energy of the atom or molecule the total energy consists of e electronic electronic position e vibration vibrational e rotational e spin which is the nuclear spin and e translational translational is the kinetic energy present in the molecule and other all these electronic vibrational rotational and spin energies are involved which are the which are potential energies or which are present in the molecule and it it has several different effects and they absorb radiation and become excited here if we look at the energy level diagram here is the ground state of an atom or molecule which is e naught at e naught the vibrational energy level is v naught and the rotational energy level is, level is r naught from move, uh, the difference between e naught and e1 is greater like here we have shown if here is the e naught ground state energy level which is the electronic energy level and uh, if we look at here e1 is the second electronic energy level so this gap represents that the energy difference between e naught and e1 which is the e electronic is greater so electronic energy is greater than vibrational energies or rotational if, but if we look at the vibrational energy levels v naught is here and v1 is here so here is a small difference between v naught and v1 and then v1 to v2 so these v1 v naught v1 and v2 represents the vibrational energy levels so these are less than the electronic energy levels and if we look at the rotational energy level they are even more uh, less than the vibrational energy levels the like here r naught r1 r2 r3 similarly r naught r1 so each vibrational energy levels may contain different rotational energy levels so these are more less electronic excitation during electronic excitation electrons can be excited from e naught to e1 ground state or any other vibrational state they can be excited to the e e naught to e1 but the vibrational state may be v1 similarly vibrational state may be r1 or r2 and so on and these are the electronic excitation if the excitation is only vibrational excitation so uh, it can be from v naught to v1 or v2 or v3 and if the electronic and if the excitation is rotational then it may be from r naught to r2 r1 or r3 and so on so these are the rotational excitation spin excitation is even more less than all these type of energy energies so spin energy is very less than the 
others so if we look at the order of these energy levels here is the order of the energy levels which are non degenerate energy levels so no, uh, these are the non degenerate energy levels in which the energy energy of these ener uh, energy levels are not same so e electronic is greater than the e vibrational and it is great greater than e rotational and it is greater than e spin so here is the order of the energy levels so today we discussed these parameters and the introductory part uh, after this we will study the electronic transition and uv visible spectroscopy in our next lecture thanks